I won't tell you where these cookies are from, but I'll give you a hint. You could actually lose sleep wondering how they make them taste so good. Mm. Mm. Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I am finally coming back with another playlist video. Yes, it's another one of those features that has taken an unexpected hiatus on my channel re in recent months. Uh, what's it been, three months? Or has it even been four months longer than that that I have, uh, have not had a playlist video? It's supposed to be a monthly feature, and it's the one where I just talk about the music that I have listened to over the past little while, uh, just for fun, just for the heck of it, as well as other miscellaneous thoughts that I have on my mind, stuff relating to my channel and stuff just relating to music in general, uh, and I do that before I lay out what I've listened to. Um, but yes, I do plan on having playlists back on a monthly basis from now on. Uh, as for backtracks, I am pretty sure it's going to be on hiatus for the entire year of 2021. Uh, I have very much enjoyed not having you know, the burden, as fun as it was, the burden of doing backtracks. It was a very labor-intensive video, and I may feel inspired to bring it back in 2022. I'm not sure. I won't promise you or guarantee you anything, because I have made and unfortunately broken promises on this channel before. But uh, yes, it's uh, not having backtracks to do has given me the opportunity to do another feature, uh, you know, another special thing that I've been working on, I'm in the middle of working on right now. I wanted to get this video out to you guys today, this weekend. So yes, uh, expect that little special uh, three video feature coming up very soon, in the next couple of weeks. Now I have pretty much decided, I'm still kind of mulling it over, but I am leaning very much in the direction of doing this, uh, putting something up in place of backtracks, something that is not nearly as labor intensive as I said, but that will keep me uh, with my my self-made promise of exploring classic music uh, on a regular basis. Uh, it's one, one reason why I started Backtracks in the first place. But yes, I'm thinking I'll just do like a classic albums of the month thing. Uh, albums, plural. I'm going to try to do more than one every month. Uh, one thing that I think may have been subconsciously frustrating me about Backtracks was uh, the Spotlight albums that I would do each month were locked into, you know, they had to be albums that were released in a specific month and in one of a certain number of specific years. But this one, with if I just do classic albums of the month, I can pick something from whatever month and year it was released. Uh, I actually picked up a couple albums this week at House of Records that uh, I was uh, curious to listen to, and so those may actually be the uh, upcoming uh, first subjects in my classic albums of the month. I'm going to try and start that one in the coming month, March. So uh, yeah, look forward to that, and uh, I may put one or two of the albums that I had intended for Backtrack Spotlights as uh, classic albums of the month. So. Uh, uh, and, and it'll be something a lot more freeform, a lot more improvish. One of the things that I didn't like about Backtracks was I was constantly having to read the notes, and I, I do have light notes for this video, but I wish I could read notes and, you know, memorize notes and read them without having to look down here all the time and read them because my eyes are not on the camera and they're looking down and instead of engaging you guys visually, I hate that about about that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and improve myself uh, doing that going for, but that's a whole nother discussion. But anyway, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on with my channel as, as of late. One personal note also, I realized uh, just last week that today, the day that I filmed this is February 28th, and th this day is marks exactly 18 months, a year and a half, since Skips Records and CD World closed up permanently. I cannot believe it's been a year and a half. Uh, I've done a few episodes about Skips. Uh, I did an interview with the man himself, Skip Hermans, about, oh, was it about six months before the store closed? Uh, maybe a little earlier than that. Uh, he didn't realize he was going to be closing the store when I did the video. And I also did a couple of uh, vlog-style videos recapping my last few trips to Skips in, during their going out of business uh, sale. So I'm going to put, uh, by the time you see this video, I should have a playlist accessible from my YouTube channel's homepage. Uh, I'm going to call it Skips Records, I think I'll probably call it. So you'll find all these videos that I'm talking about in that playlist. So uh, you'll have fun with that. And yes, I had to watch some of those videos just in the last couple of weeks just to reminisce about that and uh, feel, feel sorry for myself, basically. No, I guess not really. But uh, anyway, uh, one thing I like to do in these playlist videos is recognize some of the recent passings in the world of music, uh, recent uh, deaths of music uh, luminaries, prominent music people. 
Uh, first of all, and one that I do not have any uh, CDs or records of, I'm kind of surprised, is Mary Wilson of The Supremes. I actually don't have any Supremes albums. I thought I did. Uh, I do have several Motown compilations, so I've got some Supremes songs on there, but I do. I need to get myself a Supremes compilation now that I think of it. But yes, a, a fantastic catalog, one of the premier Motown groups, one of the best girl groups in the history of music, honestly. Uh, yes, it's very, very sad to see her passing. And then we have a couple of them that I, uh, three of them that I do have albums of their works. Uh, first one coming up is Jimmy Rogers. He was a uh, pop and rockabilly singer from the 50s and 60s, uh, put out a bunch of great hits. Uh, Honeycomb was probably his biggest hit. And yes, this actually was uh, a, a CD that was in my sister's collection. So yes, I am very glad I held onto it and uh, have been spinning it a couple of times lately. So yes, one of the uh, lesser known and unjustifiably lesser known luminaries in, the, in early rock and roll and pop music. So yeah, very, very good artist. And then the next one on my list of recognitions this month is uh, he was actually a rather prominent figure in the British invasion pop movement of the 60s. Uh, the, yes, he was the uh, frontman and one of the founding members of Jerry and the Pacemakers. Jerry Marsden passed away in the last uh, few weeks. And just a great stable of songs on here. And, and this is another CD that I have thanks to my sister's collection. She was a, a pretty big fan of British Invasion Pop. And yeah, good stable of songs on here that they had in their catalog. Uh, probably their most famous hit was Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. And uh, I remember seeing a clip of an interview with Jerry Marsden uh, that was done back in the 90s. It's actually on a DVD documentary that I have, The History of Rock and Roll, where he talked about the genesis of that song. And it was a cute story. Um, his girlfriend at the time had dumped him and he wrote the song in an effort to win her back and ultimately uh, she ended up marrying him in 1965 and they were still married up until the day he died so a very cute romantic story i'm a sucker for romantic stories so how can you not like that song even more when uh when you know that story behind it so yeah jerry and the pacemakers a uh, very great slice of the british invasion pop movement pie i guess you'd say and then the final recognition I have here is an artist that was a renowned figure in jazz, but one that I actually had very limited experience with. Um, I've all, I listened to a couple of albums, his later albums back in the day, and they didn't do much for me. They were on CD. Eventually got rid of them. But this one I found, it was either in the freebie shelf or in the dollar bin. I think it was actually maybe even on the freebie shelf. Uh, Chick Corea passed away in the last few weeks. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, I think, and this is his album, Secret Agent. This is the only album of his that I have right now, uh, but it's a, a very good album, I thought. I, it's For some reason, this one clicked, whereas uh, the Chick Corea Electric Band, I think, is the one that I tried years ago, and for some reason it just didn't stick. But this one stuck, and I am uh, haven't had the chance yet, but I'm going to look for more of his stuff. Uh, but yeah, a very prominent figure in the world of jazz music, Chick Corea. Uh, Godspeed, Chicory, and all of the other artists that uh, we had to say goodbye to over the last couple of months. Okay, now onto my playlist proper for this month. Uh, as you guys might know from my previous playlist videos, I usually showcase two formats, uh, sometimes both, sometimes just one or the other, uh, CDs and LPs. But uh, thanks to the big lot of uh, cassettes that I received from a family friend last month, uh, you might have seen my big unboxing video that I did a couple weeks ago. I will now be doing three formats. Yes, I finally started digging into the cassettes. Going forward, I'm probably do, gonna stick to five, but since I haven't done playlist in a while, I thought I would do seven of each format in this video. So quite a few to get through. I'm gonna go through them kind of fast, uh, but if you want me to talk about uh, any of them at greater length, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to do a some kind of a review uh, more in depth later on. First of all, I thought I would start with going backwards in terms of the time of the format's dominance, I guess you'd say. So CDs first. First of all, uh, one of two CDs that I uh, actually bought from a friend on Discogs. Uh, this is The Best of the Romantics. This was a power pop group that had their heyday back in the late 70s to uh, through that throughout the 80s. Uh, two of their biggest hits were What I Like About You and Talking in Your Sleep. So uh, yeah, you, you might have heard of those two songs in particular. But yeah, a, a fun power pop group. And uh, for those of you who might not know uh, about power pop, it basically has the um, energy and guitar-driven nature of garage rock, but it's got the slightly more polished production and more catchy hooks that pop music is more famous for. So it's kind of a blend of garage rock and pop. So that's what power pop is basically. So yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, the romantics. 
power pop was kind of related to new wave. They kind of melded into each other in the early half of the 80s, I guess. That's my theory anyway. Uh, the other CD that I bought from my friend is the Bee Gees Greatest Hits. Uh, I actually did have one Bee Gees collection, but uh, I saw the track listing for this one, and this one had a couple more songs on it that I really wanted, so I decided to upgrade, I guess. I mean, it has about, about the same number of tracks. This has 20 tracks spread over two discs. This is an older collection than the one that I had previously. The one that I had previously was number ones. But yeah, I really like this one. And I mean, the Bee Gees, famous for their soundtrack from Saturday Night Fever and other stuff. All those hits are on here, obviously. But uh, If I Can't Have You, that was one of the ones that was not on the collection I had before. But yeah, I mean, the Bee Gees just have a great, huge list of great hits in their um, discography, in their catalog. So yeah. And then I found this one um, when I was on my way up to the register at a Barnes & Noble, I think it was, a few weeks back. Uh, I had the itch to go into a Barnes & Noble lately, and I hadn't done that in a while. Thanks, pandemic. Uh, but yeah, I found this one. I, I almost walked out without, without buying anything, but I saw this one on the racks, and I had actually been hoping to find it at some point for a while now. It is the self-titled album by Boston, a great hit from the early 80s, 1980, I think. Oh, it says 1976, earlier than I thought it was. Uh, but uh, yeah, More Than a Feeling is their big hit off of this album. I ought to do a video about um, my favorite little-known covers of hit songs, but uh, Sync, of all people, believe it or not, did a cover version of More Than a Feeling, and it was a an a cappella rendition. One of the best covers I've heard of any song anywhere. So yeah, just just throwing that out there. Look up Sync's cover of More Than a Feeling. It's They do it in a ballad rendition. Really cool. But yeah. Then uh, these next two CDs I got from uh, a a label that's more well known for their soundtracks. It's a label called Verez Sarabande, uh, but they actually had an imprint called Verez Vintage. And a, f uh, a few months back, they were having a big sale. A lot of their Verez Vintage CDs were going for like three bucks, or a couple of them were less than three bucks. So I went on and ordered like five of them, and two of them I'm going to show here. Uh, Rocket by Chuck Berry. This was his last studio album of original material, or it might have been his last studio album period, before his final album, Chuck, back in 2017, I think it was. Obviously not nearly as good as his classic stuff from the 50s, but still pretty darn good. It, it's Chuck. It's Chuck Berry. How can you not like Chuck Berry, honestly? He does a uh, rendition of Havana Moon, and I don't remember if that is a... Oh yeah, all songs written by Chuck Berry. So yes, it was Havana Moon, and I don't know if this was the album that he originally recorded Havana Moon on, or if he did one on an album previously. So, good stuff. And then the other one that I got on the Varez Vintage sale was The Very Best of the Searchers, uh, more uh, British Invasion pop, as we saw a few minutes ago from Jerry and the Pacemakers. But yes, um, Love Potion number no. 9, they do a rendition of that, and their big hit was Needles and Pins. That's a great, great song, and I, I found out about that one from my sister's uh, obsession, I guess, with, uh, with British Invasion pop. So, you know, when you pay attention to the Beatles and the Stones, and you don't really think about any of the rest of the British Invasion, there are some good pop groups uh, hanging around in there, so don't be afraid to check them out, uh, if you don't mind the poppier side of rock and roll. Uh, the Searchers is one of the uh, groups alongside Jerry and the Pacemakers. It's pretty darn good. And then two more recent stuff. Uh, Fuse, one of the more recent albums by Keith Urban. I've just recently started to uh, uh, appreciate Keith Urban's stuff. Got his uh, more recent album, I, whose name escapes me right now, that uh, came out at the end of 20, uh, 2020. That was that one's pretty good, but this one is actually, uh, I've heard a few of his recent albums lately, and this one is the best of the lot, I think. Uh, it's an album called Fuse. It was put out in 2013. So yeah, lots of, lots of good songs on this, and I'm looking forward to checking out Keith Urban in more detail. And then the last of the CD portion is uh, an, an artist that I've heard about for the last couple of years, and I've just never taken the time to delve into, but Marianas Trench. They are a Canadian uh, indie rock band, I guess you'd say, and this is their album Astoria. A few reasons why I decided to pick up this album. First of all, I streamed it, and I really like the kind of uh, power popish, I guess you'd say, or more, more synth popish uh, direction that they took in this album. I streamed a couple of their other albums, and they didn't catch me nearly like uh, this one did. But also because of, obviously, as you can see, its artwork is very much inspired by the movie The Goonies. I grew up with that movie. I loved it. And uh, thirdly in the list of connections, Astoria is a town in northwestern Oregon. And that's actually the town that The Goonies took place in. And was, it was filmed there. So, yeah. Lots of uh, 
personal connections and Oregon connections with uh, that uh, album. And it's really, really good. I'm thinking about uh, maybe uh, reinvestigating some of their other albums to see what, uh, what I might be missing or what I might not have heard the first time. And now on to the cassettes that I've listened to over the past month. Yes, I am fine. For the first time on this channel, I'll be talking about cassettes that I've listened to. It's a format that I never thought I would come back to. And I plan on doing another a, a discussion kind of a video about cassettes sometime in the near future. Uh, look forward to that at some point, but uh, yeah, for now I'll just talk about the cassettes I listen to. And a couple of uh, familiar names, uh, if you watched my unboxing video a few weeks back, uh, the more familiar names that struck a humorous chord with me, I guess you'd say. Uh, first one is Ned Spurlock. Yeah, that Ned Spurlock. Uh, he is a hammer dulcimer-ist, I guess is, is the right way to say it. Uh, yeah, and I wasn't sure what a hammer dulcimer was until I heard this tape, and I was, oh yeah, okay, that's what, that's what you call that instrument. But yes, yeah, so this this is renditions basically of pop and easy listening standards uh, performed in Ned Spurlock's in inimitable style. Ned Spurlock sounds like the name of the accountant on the floor above you where you work. You know, it's just kind of like this unassuming name for you know an artist who's actually pretty talented. I will say that about Ned Spurlock. He is talented at what he does. Uh, he does. He starts off the album with two Beatles songs, Norwegian Wood and Yesterday. He does good renditions of that. And actually closes with what I believe is also a Beatles song, And I Love Her, is the last track on side two. But yeah, he does renditions of uh, The Sound of Silence, the Simon and Garfunkel song, and one of my favorite instrumentals ever, Classical Gas. He does that. And, but yeah, pretty pretty nice little album. A, a good first taste of Ned Spurlock for me. Uh, and there are a few more of his albums in there that I'm all looking forward to listen, listening to those. And then one that there were a few tapes of um, in the collection. Uh, Floyd Kramer, he is a pianist, and I believe he worked with Elvis Presley and maybe a couple of other artists back in the early days of rock and roll. A very talented pianist, uh, Tuxedo Junction, don't get around much anymore so yeah this is much more of the great american songbook kind, kind of things rather than easy listening and uh early pop stuff but uh, yeah pretty decent stuff he's a very good pianist and then the next one here is another one that kind of got some attention in my unboxing video i might have well okay i guess i confess i guess maybe i did make fun of his name just you know, not with the intention of being cruel, you know, just because his name sounded funny. And I actually realize now that I mispronounced his name. So, so yes, it is not Norvell Feltz, it's Norval Feltz. Not that there's a huge difference, but, you know. Uh, and he's actually, he's on, honestly a pretty decent artist. He is a little more emotive with his singing than I kind of like. Uh, but, yeah, he just kind of has an almost overly theatrical sound, uh, voice for country music, is what I'm trying to say. But there were a couple of good songs on here that uh, were done by other artists that I, uh, you know, recognized when they came on. Uh, sea of Love, you might not recognize the name of that one, but that was an R&B song back in the 50s. It was pretty popular, and I honestly don't remember who the original artist that uh, made that one famous was. And also, uh, To Love Somebody st uh, starts off side two, and that is a Burt Bacharach song, I believe. But uh, yeah, uh, some some good stuff. I'm looking forward to listening to Narvel's other albums uh, that were in the uh, in the collection. So yeah, a somewhat pleasant surprise there. Then we have uh, an artist that I was familiar with. Never actually listened to him though until this tape. Uh, not knowingly listened to him anyway. Engelbert Humperdinck, an artist with probably the most fun name to say in all of popular music. Uh, yeah, Engelbert Humperdinck, uh, he sings, you know, just a, a variety of songs. Uh, yeah, he has a voice that reminds me a lot of Tom Jones, kind of like a, you know, a very, very projected voice. You know, he really sings out, sing, sings from his diaphragm. You can tell the guy just sings his heart out, you know. Uh, but yeah, not bad. I can kind of see why he's got the following and has the, uh, the, the history in popular music that he does. Talented singer, good voice. Uh, so yeah, and I think there's, what, there are a couple other ones. Maybe there was a Christmas album also in that uh, set, so. Then another artist that there were several tapes of in the group, I decided to go ahead and start with their greatest hits, Alabama, a country, country slash country pop artist. They, they kind of, uh, I think they were one of the first country bands that really did the, the pop crossover thing with country. So yeah, and uh, yeah, some plenty good songs on here. Um, Tennessee River, that was a song that I had, I knew as soon as I heard it, but I'd completely forgotten about from, I mean, I'm sure I heard it on the radio when I was a kid, probably. But uh, yeah, looking forward to listening to more of uh, their stuff. You know, 
I've noticed one of the common things, uh, imagery in some of their albums is uh, the Confederate flag, which, you know, I'm not totally comfortable with, but not that this totally excuses it, but yes, that was a different time. You know, about the only defense, a weak defense it is, but the only defense to Confederate flags being on their album covers. And then I had to give a listen to Tony Orlando and Dawn. This is their greatest hits. A uh, bunch of, uh, a couple of good, more popular songs. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. What's the other one? Knock Three Times. That's another popular one. And I recognized more of the songs on this album than I thought I would. Uh, Who's in the Strawberry Patch with Sally? That was a, uh, an interesting one. Uh, so yeah, they, they were more fun and a little bit less disco than I assumed that they were going to be. So, yeah. entertaining stuff, I have to say. And yeah, all of, the, all of these albums pretty much are keepers so far, so I've had a pretty decent run with, uh, so far, with uh, Sue's cassettes. And the last of the cassettes is Dion by Dion Warwick. Gotta love Dion Warwick. I mean, if you don't, then you're just wrong. But yeah, I'll Never Love This Way Again is on here, and Deja Vu, two of her bigger hits uh, from her career. This was this was her, a 1979 album, I believe. Yeah, 1979. I got it right. And like I said, how can you go wrong with Dionne Warwick? She's a fabulous vocalist, and um, yeah, I should have more of her albums, even though I don't. I only have a couple, I think. But yeah, yeah wonderful stuff. And now on into the vinyl records that I've listened to over the past uh, month or two or three. Um, this is the first one I mentioned Power Pop a few minutes ago with The Romantics. Uh, this is another Power Pop artist that I, I had their Greatest Hits CD for a little while and traded it in, uh, in the, with the intent of starting to pick up their individual albums on vinyl. And this is, this is their sophomore album. Uh, it's a group called The Rubenews, and they started back in the late 70s. Oh, 1979 is this uh, their sophomore album, Back to the Drawing Board. And the Rubenews actually made popular. They originally recorded the song, I Think We're Alone Now, the song that Tiffany made famous in the 80s. So yes, that was not a Tiffany original, for those of you who might not have, be aware of that. They made the song famous. And this, al this album has probably my favorite song of theirs. It's called I Want to Be Your Boyfriend. It is such a fun song. It's one of my favorite songs to come out of the 70s at all. Yes, an obscure choice for a favorite song from the 70s, but uh, it's just, it is such an absolutely fun song. That kind of distills what power pop is down to its very essence. Catchy hooks, great lyrics, uh, you know, a, a guitar driven sound, just a fun, fun, fun song. Uh, Drive In Music is another song that was uh, relatively popular out of their discography. So, yeah, I would recommend if you like power pop or if power pop sounds like something that you might like. The Rubenews are an, uh, an artist to ch check out, along with the Romantics. Good stuff. And then uh, going a little bit further back in time than uh, the Rubenews here, we're going back to Frank Sinatra with his album Cycles. Uh, this one I actually got from a friend as well. A, a few records and CDs this month I got from friends. Uh, but yeah, Frank does a lot of uh, popular songs, songs that were popular during the 60s on this album. Uh, both sides now, the Joni Mitchell hit, as well as Little Green Apples, and I'm not sure who it was that originally recorded that song, Wandering, and By the Time I Get to Phoenix, and he closes out the album with Gentle on My Mind. Just a, a good a, a good song cycle, no pun intended with the title. But yeah, and as of course, it's Frank Sinatra. I mean, his vocals are, are flawless, pretty much. And uh, curiously, he's depicted on pictures on the back cover with um, a couple of different artists. Uh, notice at the top, Tiny Tim. And I, I can't remember exactly what he had to do with the album, if anything. Or I don't know if he just visited Sinatra when they were near, near each other in the same studio or something like that. Anyway, a very good Sinatra album, as pretty much all his albums were. And then speaking of Tiny Tim, and yes, I arranged these records in that order deliberately, uh, we have the next two records here are probably considered, at least in retrospect, are considered novelty records even though at the time they were being recorded and probably not by the artist were they being considered novelty records. They were probably taking them fairly seriously. And the first one is, yes, Tiny Tim. It is his album, God Bless Tiny Tim. And uh, yes, this one has uh, Tiptoe Through the Tulips on it, his big, big hit. Living in the Sunlight, Loving in the Moonlight. It's another curious one. But this album actually was not what I thought it was going to be. This was filled with some bizarre segues and interludes and... I've never taken hallucinogenic drugs. Well, I've never really taken any drugs that weren't prescribed by a doctor. But uh, I have to wonder what uh, a good dose of uh, ma magic mushrooms would do uh, with uh, putting this album on. I, it's it's got to be an interesting trip. 
uh, pun intended, in and of itself. But yeah, this is this was definitely a '60s album. You know, just very strange, bizarre kind of stuff. Uh, and yes, Tiny Tim in his own inimitable, uh, weird style. But yeah, I, I'm glad I bought it. And it was just because I'd wanted to hear an entire album of his. I had only ever heard Tiptoe Through the Tulips. And so uh, it was an inter interesting experience. It was worth the $8 I think I paid for it. To some people it might not be, but anyway. Uh, the other novelty record that I have for you is Mrs. Miller's Greatest Hits. Now, if you haven't heard about Mrs. Miller, and incidentally, I believe this is her first album. It's just called her Greatest Hits because that's, I guess, what the marketing people wanted to do. And uh, yeah, she is. Uh, she was a housewife who just liked to sing. She loved to sing, kind of like the famous uh, woman from the 30s, 20s or 30s that had the really bad voice. They made a movie out of her, kind of along the same lines, but uh, she is actually easier on the ears, Mrs. Miller is. She sings pretty much in tune. It's just that she has a, uh, some problems keeping up with the, or had, I think she's passed away by now, had some problems keeping with the rhythm that the musicians were making. And also, um, she had a very exaggerated vibrato. I hope she was okay with the fact that most of her listeners were laughing at her. So, but hey, she this was enjoyable. I mean, I got to say, you know, a lot of um, contemporary hits from the '60s. This album, I believe, was put out in the '60s. Uh, Downtown, the uh, Petula Clark song. She does that one, and A Hard Day's Night, the Beatles song. She kind of butchers that one, and These Boots Are Made for Walking, the Nancy Sinatra tune. So. Her charm outweighs any uh, aesthetic detriments. That's a good way to put it, uh, that you might uh, get in your ears from music. So, yeah. But anyway, moving on. Uh, this next one, I don't think this next one could really be called a novelty record, but it is probably his least well-received album. And it's actually one of the few albums by this artist that I even own. It's a weird place to start. You're going to scratch your heads for me at this one, but uh, for some reason I like several of the songs on this one. Neil Young and the Shocking Pinks with their album Everybody's Rockin'. Yeah, it's it's a rockabilly themed thing that yeah one of Neil Young's questionable diversions over the course of his career. But uh, Weird Al Yankovic would do a two-hour block on MTV back in the day that he would call Al TV, and he would play mostly music videos of other people's novelty songs, but he would also play just other videos from straight songs that he found interesting. And one of those that I just somehow glommed onto for some reason was Wonderin'. It's a song that uh, I guess was released as a single and you know it, was, it had a music video made out of it. And it's kind of a funny video. And so it, that was kind of my first exposure really to Neil Young uh, when I was, you know, what, 14, 15 years old. I had never really checked out Neil Young before. So that's kind of a personal connection that I have to this album. It's because that one song was my first exposure to Neil Young. So, yeah, what can I say? I'm entertained by the album. So. And then the uh, next one here is uh, a pretty popular one. It has it has this artist's biggest hits on it. I had a uh, Greatest Hits album, but this album had all the songs on it that I really cared about from the Greatest Hits, so I picked it up. It is City to City by Jerry Rafferty. And yes, uh, the song Baker Street is his biggest hit, probably. And Right Down the Line is another big song of his. But yeah, Baker Street is... Yeah, funny thing. If you go onto Google and type in the song with that saxophone solo, Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty is probably the one that's going to come up. Google is hilarious uh, that way. So yeah, anyway, good stuff. Good, good album by a good artist that I had never really delved into other than his greatest hits, which I no longer have. And now this album, I'm thinking about checking him out in further de detail. So, good stuff. And the last LP in my playlist today is one that um, I've been on a bit of a binge, I guess you'd say, with this character's movies lately. So, naturally, I decided to... I, I had the bug in my ear to listen to the soundtracks. And this one I put on uh, the other day when I was working here from home, stuck in an Excel spreadsheet. And when I'm doing boring accounting stuff like that, stuck in an Excel spreadsheet, I want to make it sound as epic as I can, so I put on the soundtrack from Superman the Movie. Okay. John Williams. I mean, I could make a whole video about just about that movie, and I intend to when I get my other channel launched, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months. But uh, yeah, it, as if everything else about that movie wasn't perfect, John Williams' score just ratcheted it up several more notches. I mean, one of his finest scores ever. Sometimes I put the movie on for, you know, half the excuse that I put the movie on is so that I can watch the amazing main title sequence because the music just makes it 
super awesome. Yeah, super awesome. <laughs> but yeah, the soundtrack is just fantastic. Uh, yes, this was actually in my sister's and brother-in-law's collection. So the sleeve, as you can kind of tell, the jacket is very worn out. But uh, And there are a couple of the tracks on the more quiet songs on here. The more quiet tracks had some crackling on them. But otherwise, you know, no skips on the album. So it's in pretty good shape, man. Check out the gatefold, huh? Amazing. So yes, Superman the movie, one of the most, one of the best soundtracks that John Williams ever did, and yeah, that sums up my playlist for this month. And so that'll do it for my playlist for the month of February 2021. Monthly playlist installments to be forthcoming. I'll do my best. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.